Today I'm going to talk about Newton and the longitude, by which I mean Isaac Newton, famous for theory of gravitation, and um, longitude as in longitude at sea, that is finding your east-west position at sea. Um, so part of the point of the talk is to think about astronomy in, in Newton's period, 17th and 18th centuries, and one of the really important contexts for it, which is um, using astronomy to aid navigation. Um, one of the points I want to make in the lecture is that we think of Newton often in a somewhat disembodied way. He has these amazing ideas. They're sort of um, unconnected to the realities of the world. He is traditionally a lone genius um, coming up with, you know, inspiring um, ideas in solitude. When, of course, he comes from a context, he responds to his context and um, he is deeply involved in the Longitude project, partly through the astronomical and mathematical work he's doing, um, but also um, in collaboration with other people, in drawing on their observations, in coming up with theories that will, he hopes, be of practical benefit, and also um, linking in with the state's interest in this kind um, of work. So um, the government is interested in astronomy that could help navigators could aid trade and empire. Um, and so Newton's work fits into that world. So um, a couple of the key points I want to make, one is that Newton has to be seen in his context and that he is involved in this very practical and indeed political world of longitude projecting. And um, the other one is also to, to think a little more about the story of longitude, which people are sometimes familiar with largely in terms of the story of the making of timekeepers to solve the problem of longitude in the 18th century. So John Harrison is seen as the lone genius hero of that story. Um, but it, of course, wasn't quite as simple as that. Um, astronomy was a, a hugely important part of the story. In terms of uh, the collections here at Cambridge, my talk um, intersects very nicely between a couple of the very significant scientific collections that there are here. So on the one hand, there are papers uh, of Isaac Newton, who obviously had a connection with Cambridge for many years, and um, many of his papers have been digitised and available to um, people to, to explore. And that includes um, a little segment about um, ideas on the longitude that show Newton's kind of um, public role in corresponding with the Admiralty particularly and others about um, different ideas for solving the problem of longitude, um, about whether it was a good idea to set up a reward from government to encourage people to explore this area. And as time went on after the reward was passed by Parliament, he was consulted sometimes about particular ideas. He had to suggest whether he thought they were plausible or if he thought that other people ought to, to look at them, or if he thought it really wasn't worth people's time at all. Um, so that's a nice little batch of papers. It includes, as so often with um, Newton's work, lots of copies of the same thing. He always drafted what he was going to say or what he was going to send um, quite carefully. He clearly wanted to make sure that he was going to be clear and, and get it right. And it's interesting to see that in terms of um, his advice to Parliament when he had to stand up before a committee and say, these are the plausible methods, this is the problems with them. So I'll go into those in the talk. Um, and he is generally dead right. There's a, a view that Newton got it wrong when it comes to longitude because he emphasised the role of astronomy so much more than the role of timekeeping, which is often seen as the ultimate solution to the longitude problem. But it is, as I'll be saying, more complicated than that. And of course, Newton was right, as it turns out. Um, the other set of papers that um, I'll be referring to are relating to the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, um, now known as the Royal Greenwich Observatory Papers. And they include uh, both papers from all the Astronomers Royal. So I'll be talking about John Flamsteed, who was the first Astronomer Royal in position at Greenwich from 1675 onwards. And he also, by dint of, of why the observatory was set up, got um, closely involved in longitude solutions and um, had quite a lot of arguments with Newton about that, so that will be in the talk too. Um, and also the um, RGO collection includes the papers of the Board of Longitude. So this is um, became known as the Board of Longitude over time. Initially it was um, a series of commissioners, so Newton was and Flamsteed were both early commissioners of longitude. They didn't, as far as we know, meet as a group for some time, um, but they were people, as Newton was, um, being asked to give their 
um, views on submissions when they came in. One of the points I want to make in this talk is emphasising that, that Newton isn't this lone genius who just has problems that he wants to work on and that he's somehow connected with the mind of the designer or the nature of truth and science or, you know, however it gets put in terms of the sort of mythology that's built up around Newton over time. And it is to emphasise uh, that science always has been, as well as it still is, a very collaborative endeavour. And that's collaborative over time. We all know famously that Newton talked about how if he'd seen further, it was by standing on the shoulders of giants. He was building on the work of people who had come before him, which is clearly true. But he's also building on the work of all sorts of contemporaries, many of whom are, well, most of whom are far less well known than he is. Um, there may be people like um, John Flamsteed, the Astronomer Royal, who a bit less famous, clearly a significant figure though, and, and his um, observations were so important that, that Newton really chased after them to try and get access to, to that information. But there are people um, elsewhere who, you know, history barely remembers that, that Newton relied on as well in terms of giving him observational data against which he could test his theoretical ideas. So um, we need to always remember that um, science is built up of lots of people and all sorts of contributions. Um, and I think that holds true. Also, clearly, that science is a product of its time, of the interests, of the money that's available, of the questions that people have. Um, science doesn't float free of history or the present in that way.